This is George from uh, Pennsylvania. Should we be actively screening and looking for more short squeezes like GameStop? GameStop. Have you guys done any research on short squeezes in the quadrants? Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, we're always looking for short squeezes, um, what, no matter what quadrant we're in. But when you look at high short interest of, as a factor exposure, guys, can you pop, pop up yeah. the factor exposure table? Um, let's just go through that. that that's it's going to be a week old, so it's a little stale, but you'll still get the point. Uh, so you go to SI, the column that says, or the row that says XSI, and you look at the uh, three month return on high short interest versus low short interest, it's 27 to 10. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're playing a hockey game, 27 to 10 would be a sufficient drubbing. That, that's, they, they probably get their 8 out of their 10 when you put the fourth line out there, like for the entire period. Um, but that's, that's an ass kicking. So, yeah, we're looking for those. And then we're going to. Yeah, and, yeah I, th I think the other thing, too, is, um, you know, there's a little more than just a short squeeze at work here, too. You know, I think, you know, so I, I reached out to a friend of ours who runs an outsourced trading desk for hedge funds to ask about GameStop. And, you know, his narrative was, you know, it's the Robin Hoodies. There's some chat group somewhere. But the reality is in GameStop or Michael Storrs, other 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 companies like this, um, fundamentals are actually getting better, too. So you have this combination of fundamentals improving, catalysts like activists. But then you also have the short squeeze, of, of course, which creates more buying. So... You know, it's not, I don't think the short squeeze alone, although to Keith's point, the factor, you know, you can see the factor, it's pretty obvious, 27 to 10. But, you know, if you can find a heavily shorted stock that fundamentals are also improving, you know, that's really the elixir you want. It's it's pretty typical, too, like when you when you think about, um, and Darius could show you the back test on what, what Jonesy just said. We're not going to speak loosely, qualitatively. That No offense to who told you that, Jonesy, but that's pretty loose. There's yeah. a chat room with hoodies, like, come on. I mean, they're, that's, what they're, that's what they're getting from their hedge fund clients that are, sh are short. Oh, yeah, yeah. As opposed to giving hedge eye that, you know, we tweeted it like 25 times in a day. You think that had some impact? Yeah. Um, so there's, um, let's just look. So in the four quadrants, let's just do a little exercise here, okay? We have um, one, two, three, and four, okay? In here, where we were for a while, by the way, a lot of shorts work. A lot of low quality companies, the worst companies get impaled here. And cyclical companies too. And that's why people call them cyclicals because they're terrible companies when the cycle's against them and they're great companies when the cycle is for them. So you quite literally have the opposite shorts right here in quad two. So here I am, Captain Hedge Fund guy or gal, and this has been a long standing history and a lot of them have gone away and they get really pissed off when I say it and they wouldn't if, it's, if this wasn't 100% accurate, is that they are completely unaware of the quads. It's okay. They didn't come up with it. They're not going to credit me. Even the last, I mean, I get called, get called a litany of names for this. But if your shorts are these in this quad, you're about to get your face completely ripped off. That's it. Like, you, it doesn't matter how bad the company is in three years. Like, your business school model, and you're like, look at the uh, ROI and the returns. And, no. You're either a rookie or you're dogmatic or both, and dogmatic fund managers don't last in the hedge fund business, right? They get squeezed and then they go away. Um, and we've seen a lot of people you know, turn those into, you know, turn in the keys on that. So again, these two environments, think of it this way, tailwind versus headwind. All right, I have a tailwind behind me. I'm five foot nine, 190 pounds, okay? Do you think, I, I have a hurricane behind me. Let's get a real tailwind. Do you think I'm going to go faster or I'm going to go slower? Now let's put the hurricane in front of me. I'll just like lean into it like this, and I'm not going to move anywhere, okay? So again, the conditions are quite literally the opposite in that regard. And it's a really easy thing for people to understand that don't have baggage. I'm going to short expensive stocks and crappy companies. I'm going to buy you know, cheap stocks because they're good companies. And you know, it's just it, it, over time that just doesn't bear out relative to the process that we're helping you execute on. Once you yep. get into this quad, high short interest as a factor exposure is green. That's a good thing. <clears throat> you want to be as a short seller. Over here, it's a bad thing. It's your liability. So you better be really right on the fundamentals, number one, and you better not be with a crowd, right? Because if yep. you're really right and you're with a crowd, it's still a liability, right? It's called a hedge fund mafia. You all have the same ideas. You're calling each other. 
talking up the sell side, pushing your book. I know how it goes. You do too. All right? So at the end of the day, that's the liability, and it's, it's pretty sensible to think it through that way. 